Join the conversation every Monday afternoon at 3 p.m. Pacific for Inner Voice Heartfelt Chat with Dr. Fushan. Dr. Fushan has a direct approach to getting you to free your mind. Inner Voice is a live call-in show where you can chat about your life and all that matters to you in your relationships. Inner Voice Heartfelt Chat with Dr. Fushan, Monday afternoons at 3 p.m. Pacific on Smart Talk, KMAT, 1490 AM, and on the Internet stream. The Inner Voice Show is a dialogue between the host and the listeners about their relationships. This show is not an attempt to assess, diagnose, or treat any mental health or illness condition. Please consult your physician, psychiatrist, or psychotherapist for personal matters. Inner Voice. A heartfelt chat with Dr. Fujian. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Fujian Zane, and welcome to the Inner Voice Show. Today, we have an opportunity to chat, to chat about you, about your life, about your relationships, about everything that matters to you, and it's important in your life. Now, my intention is to create a wonderful space for all of you to um, create clarity for yourself in um, what you want in life, in how you think, how you feel, how you act, and how you create and co-create this life of yours, and how you create the life for everyone around you, too, because obviously you impact everyone around you. So call me at 951 922-3532. And today is our first time. I'm so excited. And I also want to thank um, Sean Nickerson and um, have uh, you all of you meet Sean because he's going to be our studio engineer. So together, we're going to be with you. So call me at 951-922-3532. Three, two. This morning, I was also um, at Aaron and Brad's morning show. It was wonderful. It was. Uh, I really thank them for having me on. And um, I love to have all of you uh, to call in and we can chat. And I think we have our first caller, actually, uh, Roxana on the line. Roxana? Hi, Dr. Fujan. Hello, Roxana. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Uh, Thank you for taking my call. Yes, it's exciting to have you as my first caller. I'm excited, too. (laughs) So tell me, tell me about you. Well, I am 35 years old, Mm -hmm. single, but I live with someone who is six years younger than me. Nice. Okay. (laughs) I want to get your... A professional opinion on dating and or marrying someone that much younger than me. So is the, when you say six, uh, you live with someone who's six years younger than you, does that mean that um, you are dating each other or just living together? No, we are dating. Okay. Male or female? Male. Male. Okay. So um, how's it been so far? How long have you guys been dating? Well, we've known each other for two years, but we were living far away, coast to coast. So it was like a very much of a long distance relationship. And then we decided to give it a try and live together to see how things work out. So we both moved to a mutual state. He left his home state. I left my home state. um, And now we are living together. Oh, that's wonderful. And um, how long have you guys been living together? Uh, For about six months. Oh, six months. Okay. All right. How old? And he's six years older, uh, younger than you, right? Yes. Okay. And um, so far, what is it that you like about this relationship? Um, I mean, that's a good question. He is nice. He is a nice person. He's, he's just a nice person, but I'm not sure if I can tolerate him all the time because sometimes he comes out as a child to me. I would, I don't know whether it's because I'm six years older or what it is, but sometimes I, I, you know, 
he he acts like a little kid. And what does he do that you think he acts like a little kid? Uh, you know, he doesn't know where to stop, whether he is being too cute, for example, with the dog, or if he's watching a sports event, uh, he just jumps up and down and out of control, where I enjoy the same thing very much so, like if we are at a ball game, I am enjoying myself, I am showing, you know, um, all sorts of attention to the game, but he just will not sit down. He just jumps up and down and loud, and just like a kid would do at Toys R Us, you know? <laughs> so I don't know if a 29-year-old doing that is uh, just being a kid uh, because of his age, or that's just the way he chooses to be and he enjoys playing his child side. Uh, have you ever told him that uh, that kind of bothers you at times? Yeah, I told him the first time it happened, and uh, um, and he heard me, but then he did it again. Mm. So that's just part of who he is, in a sense. So your question is, is it okay to um, date someone who's younger than you? Um, and I think that it really depends. Uh, you know, the age itself uh, only really, really matters when it's a change of phase of life. So such as if you're 35 and, uh, you know, you want to have kids and you want to marry and you want to be uh, in a space where you're getting closer and closer to wanting a family and maybe he is still younger and he doesn't want that. So maybe the change of the phase of life might not be very similar, but if it has to do with character and maturity, then um, it depends on what he has had in his life as far as experiences. Has he ever been married before? Has he ever been in a long-term relationship before? Has he ever lived with someone before? No, he's never lived with anyone before. And, and I don't think he's had a long-term relationship. He was in a relationship, but it wasn't long-term. And another thing about him that bothers me is that maybe because he's the only child, it's all about him. Oh. Everything so that he, he does He doesn't is know great. couplehood. He doesn't really learn how to be, in a sense, in a, a couplehood where he can kind of together make something and be together in a way. Have you been married before? No, but I was in a in a long term relationship. I, I was living with someone before this. So, so you're more mature not only from age but also from life experience. Yes. I, yeah. Um what are the things that would uh there was something about him that got you to meet from uh, across the coast and then even choose to go to a third state and and live together. So there was really something about him that made you want to be with him. What was that? Well, you know, he we met, we were both on a business trip, and that's how we met. I liked it because he was a professional. You know, my job requires me to travel, so did his job at the time. Uh, and then we we got to talk, and uh, he was just a just a decent person, and the way he kept approaching me, calling me, and showing interest, mm -hmm. um, kind of got my attention. So you like it when somebody gives you that attention and the uh, the interest, but then now when he is uh, kind of going into himself, then it's bothering you. Yeah, it bothers me because he talks about himself and what he has and what, you know, he talks about uh, things in general a lot. For example, let's say uh, he's got a nice watch, for example. He keeps talking about it. If he has a nice set of golf clubs, he keeps talking about it. You know, if you have it, good for you. People don't need to know about it. Those who see it, see it and understand it. And those who don't, you don't need to talk about it all the time. That's what bothers me about him. He's so it seems off. like he's still trying to raise his self-esteem and uh, confidence and show other people what I have. And uh, sometimes we're not settled yet inside, so we need to keep uh, telling people so we get a feedback from them in figuring out who we are. And we 
have the world be our mirror uh, to tell us that we're good enough. But I would see also that in your eyes, after six months of living, um, he's no longer feeling probably that good enough. So maybe he's actually needing to get other people's feedback to say, I am good enough, because somehow the way you're talking to me, maybe you're also letting him know that you're frustrated with him because you're, you sound frustrated with him. Sometimes I do get frustrated with him and I tell him that, but sometimes I um, talk to him like a friend, you know, and saying, dude, you know, you are good as you are. You don't need to show up. Mm -hmm. But it's like he doesn't hear me or like you said, he needs to experience it more. And that's where I feel the gap about the age. Right. That I'm more mature than he is. In social settings, it seems like. Now, when you live together, what about the rest of the responsibilities, such as uh, taking care of the house, the hygiene of the house, uh, bills, uh, decision makings that you do as a couple, as you live together, um, the, the chores around the house and all of the other ones or like socialization between him and your family and friends and you and his family and friends. How are the two of you compatible in that area? Um, in keeping the house nice and neat, we are not anything like each other. I'm a okay. very clean, uh, you know, neat person and he is the messiest that I have ever seen in my life. So we... <laughs> No, seriously, doctor. So he and I decided that we are going to have a cleaning lady come once a week and keep the house clean for the sake of our relationship. So, Roxanne, are you feeling like his mother at times? Yes. And I'm not a good mother, you know. I, I, I am not ready to be <laughs> his mother. Let's put it this way, you know. Well, you might be an amazing mother. You just don't want to mother your mate. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm trying to say, yes. I don't want to be <laughs> his mother. I want to be his other yeah. half, not his mother, you know? Yeah, it just kills attraction. It really does. It. Uh, I would probably think that he didn't come to see you and be with you and live with you to actually go back home and live with his mother either. So he probably is not enjoying you taking on that role. But I'm sensing that there's a, a part of you that this is not working. So you keep wanting to discipline him and tell him what to do and what not to do and how to be and how to act in, um, in the public. And this irritates you. And then uh, after you tell him, does he rebel against you or does he actually listen? Uh, he listens for two seconds and then he forgets and goes back to his normal self. So, but he listens uh, because he actually agrees with you? He, like you ha have a dialogue and he agrees with you? Uh, or, not necessarily. No. Sometimes I feel like he wants just to shut me up. So mm -hmm. he, he agrees with me. And then, like I said, it doesn't last long and he goes back to what he really, to who he really is, you know. Right. Um, and it, it probably is not that enticing for him to also uh, be in a space where he, in your eyes, is not on a pedestal and he's not being seen as someone that you could be proud of when you uh, are around. It seems yeah, like you were I, interested the same way that he was exciting and he was being gaining a lot of attention and coming to you and getting your attention and all of that was exciting. But that was fun um, for maybe dating and uh, being across the United States. But when it comes to living together, when it comes to marriage, when it comes to more responsibilities, it seems like you needed more of a compatibility. And somehow in six months you're sh sharing and seeing that the compatibilities are not there. Sometimes th people are not that compatible at the beginning, but at least they're willing and excited about learning to become us, to become the two of us together, something in between that is beautiful and we can create. And it's an opportunity for both of us to grow. And yeah. um, I can learn and grow with the other person while so he could grow into all the aspects of responsibilities that you're presenting in the maturity and you can grow 
to maybe play a little bit and not be so, you know, like the motherly person who has to, everything has to be in a particular way. So maybe if if you can both see each other in in that level of it would be awesome to be together. But if he irritates you um, and you cannot put yourself in a position that uh, constantly uh, is enjoyable for you and you have to watch him because if you are out is as if you're out with an unruly child and this just doesn't sit with, well with you or you're embarrassed by him or uncomfortable um, then you're not going to have uh, a very very good relationship it's going to be kind of like uh, lopsided after a while he's going to you're going to become more of an irritated mother and he's going to become like a rebellious teenager that he's going to just be irritated and probably start lying to you or moving around and wanting to be kind of away, not be with you a lot of times. Have you noticed that already? Yes, I have. And I think the reason, I, I think I, we are about to, you know, go our own way. And I think uh, it's only fair for him. He needs to grow up and experience life a little bit more by himself mm -hmm. before he can... Uh, live with someone or he should maybe find somebody like himself you know so so these things won't happen because it, like you mentioned sometimes when we are out with friends or in a you know gathering I kind of have to keep my eye on him not to do something um, you know uh, or say something that is not right and I, I don't want to be that person. I want, when I'm out, I want to have fun and not have sure. to think about what my mate is going to do or going to say. Is it, you know? So I just wanted to get your opinion. Emma, is it, is it the age difference or is it something uh, that I need to change about me? Well, I don't know if it's necessarily age difference. Um, six years could be for when men are younger. Usually women um, sometimes grow uh, faster uh, and uh, they have more experiences, such as you've had an experience of being with someone and living with them for a long time. So that gained experience for you. He does not have that. Now he's either going to have it with you or he's going to have it with somebody else. But ultimately, he has to grow up into different types of experiences in couplehood. Um, so if you have the tolerance and if you can enjoy uh, a lot of different things about him, uh, then maybe a, a something that you could do. Uh, but if uh, if not, I mean, you could have been with somebody who's 50 years old and still acts the same way. So I don't know if it's just the age difference. It could be just the character difference and that uh, it's the element of not him him not having the same experiences. This is my suggestion for you before we say goodbye to each other. This is my suggestion for you. Um, Roxanne, why don't you take a, a piece of paper and put, um, take it and, and kind of log for about a week or two and see what are all the things that are beautiful about him and that you love about him, that he adds to your life and is just great. And then all the things that kind of irritates you and um, upsets you about uh, all of the behaviors that are there. And then maybe you can have a you know heart to heart talk with him and let him know that these are all the beautiful things that brought us together. I love you and I want to be with you and, all, and, and these are all that works. These are some elements that just doesn't work for me. And is there a way that... Um, that you and I can come to some agreement about how to change some of these behaviors that works for both of us. And maybe ask him to do the same, to write a letter, you know, write the benefits and the cost of this relationship together. And maybe you can also listen to some of the things that he says that is irritating him. So maybe you guys give each other a chance to grow in as a feedback that you're giving each other. And that might be beautiful. If you do those exercises and dialogues and you see, just isn't doing it. You know, we're not compatible. We tried and, you know, we're going forward, but this is not really working. Then maybe it is time to say goodbye and, you know, find someone who is more compatible with you and have had some life experiences that have matched you. How's that? Sounds great. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was beautiful talking to you. And I'm so blessed that I had you for my first caller. It is wonderful. So call back anytime you want. I will. Thank you so much, doctor. You have a pleasant day.
You too. You too, honey. Well, thank you, Sean. I guess we're going to go on, on a break and everyone will be right back. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Savings for Toyota of San Bernardino. Dreaming about the new 2018 Toyota Avalon? Take a drive on the style side with either 0% APR financing for up to 72 months or $5,000 in customer cash back with the purchase of your new 2018 Toyota Avalon at Toyota of San Bernardino. 215 Freeway Auto Plaza Drive, San Bernardino. Offer ends 4318, 0% APR for 72 months based on 1389 per thousand borrowed and available to buyers with approved Tier 1 Plus and Tier 1 credit only from Toyota Financial Services. Does not include taxes, license, title fees, insurance, and $80 in dealer charges. Don't be late for the 100th Annual Cherry Festival. Starting the weekend of May 31st through June 3rd at Stewart Park. Gates open at 5 p.m. Thursday and Friday and at noon Saturday and Sunday. There's some great entertainment, just to name a few. Eddie Money, Bretton Wood, Jefferson Starship, Mini Kiss, and Restless Hearts. Carnival rides for the kids, vendors that all will enjoy, and a beer garden for the adults. Use the free shuttle from the Beaumont Walmart or the Beaumont Sports Park and get a dollar off admission. See you there. Join the conversation every Monday afternoon at 3 p.m. Pacific for Inner Voice Heartfelt Chat with Dr. Fushan. Dr. Fushan has a direct approach to getting you to free your mind. Inner Voice is a live call-in show where you can chat about your life and all that matters to you in your relationships. Inner Voice Heartfelt Chat with Dr. Fushan. Monday afternoons at 3 p.m. Pacific on Smart Talk, KMAT, 1490 a.m. and on the Internet stream. After the game, after school, after work, Applebee's is where you want to be to enjoy their bold, savory grilled steaks, salmon, or chicken. Applebee's is located where Beaumont meets Banning, just off 6th Street near Highland Springs Avenue. Applebee's started with the same philosophy they follow today. Focus on serving good food to good people in a neighborhood-style setting. Applebee's also offers car side to go when you order online. Applebee's in Beaumont, serving the pass area. So fresh, so fast, make it Applebee's tonight. And now, back to our program. We're back. We're back. Okay, so call me. 951-922-3532. I would love to hear from all of you. So until um, we talk to the next uh, caller, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the Life Reset book uh, that um, I created. And it is from um, the psychological and an educational model that I created based on all that's out there. And I learned for 27 years and kind of put it together as a structure. And uh, it's actually in this book, The Life Reset. And um, not only that I utilize that in uh, therapeutic mode, and we did a lot of research on, on that with uh, Cal State Long Beach uh, students, 130 students that we did, and we minimized depression and anxiety and raised self-esteem and uh, self-efficacy. But uh, we also decided to create this model as a proactive model with uh, children. Uh, so Gem Educare is the first uh, daycare preschool uh, that is in Tarzana, California, that is having and running this model, the awareness integration model with their children. There is a post, uh, there's a video that is on my page at the KMET uh, page. If you go on KMET1490am.com and on uh, my page, uh, you'll see a video. It's an educational video that it's uh, the founder of Gem Educare and me. And um, there's uh, Dr. Jaffe, who's a, a scholar and a researcher. And uh, and that's um, that 
I wanted you all of you to know that if you wanted your child to actually go through this um, awareness integration model as they're growing up, which this creates a distinction between uh, their emotion and creates um, in the emotional intelligence for them. Uh, you could go ahead and call it Gem Educare at 818-858. I need my glasses. Let me read you the actual correct number. Um, 818-858-5955. I think we have another caller on the on, on um, with us. Hello. Hello, Dr. Bougie. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, yes. Welcome. How are you today? I'm doing pretty well. How are you? I'm doing okay, That's, but I need some help. That's why I'm calling you. Awesome. Tell me your name. My name is Clyde. Hi, Clyde. How old are yes. you, if I may ask? I am 50 years old. 30 years old. Okay. So tell me about a little bit about you, and then uh, what is your concern or something about your life that you want to share with us? Okay. Well, I am recently divorced. Uh, it's about four years now, and I have two young children, eight and five. Oh. And I, and, uh, and I, uh, the girls? Go ahead. And I still feel, I guess, some form of resentment or a mixture uh, of Missing out some of the... You keep getting cut off, Clyde. Can you hear me can now? You talk to the, can you talk to the uh, actual phone? Because I think you're getting cut off. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I do. So girls or okay. boy? Okay. So basically, I still feel, I guess, some remnants of resentment or disappointment. And I just want to know, is that something that I can actually get through and become a better person, a better father? Sure. Can you tell me why you got divorced? That I really don't know. I don't have the full answer or or story behind it. I know I brought something to the table that that may have triggered that, but I really can't really can't really say. How long were you married? Uh, going back, let's say, six years, total of 13 years together. Mm -hmm. um, uh, thank you for taking some responsibility and saying that you brought something onto the table. Can you tell me what you brought to the table that created the divorce? Well, after seeking some therapy, it seems that part of that resentment that I might have been carrying around started with my mother and that mm -hmm. lack of relationship there. And as you know, children covet what they see every day and picking some form of what she was and, and a mate probably facilitated that behavior in me. That I was even that I was unaware of until unfortunately it was too late. Did she ask for a divorce or did you ask for a divorce because of your resentments? Well, it was more or less at the point it got to, I was just, there was no relationship left in, mm. in my eyes. So you created so resentment I, for yourself and then you kind of pulled back? That's what I'm very unclear on in terms of was that the trigger over the years or I know it's something that I needed to work on and now I'm aware of what that, what that is. And you said that after four years, you're still holding a lot of disappointment. Are you disappointed uh, at yourself, at her, at the marriage, at the experience? I think it's a mixture of, of everything because I'm someone that wants to be able to fix things, to, to make it work. And at the time, looking back, I thought 
I offer therapy or let's try this or I'll change, I'll, I'll get better at doing whatever it is. And that old adage of it's not enough or it didn't work. And then some things with her behavior has not changed over the past four years. Mm-hmm. And knowing what I know now, it, it's been there the entire time we were together. Oh, yeah. But I just look, I just yeah. look past it, through it, made an excuse for it. Oh, it's not that bad. I could deal with it. It's no, you know, it doesn't matter. What do you think of her, Clyde? Pardon me? What do you think of her? How do you think of her? If you could give me adjectives or what you thought about her personality, what would you say? Good and bad, positive and negative. Because obviously there were positive that you were together for 13 years. (laughs) Well, you know, thinking back, I was just head over heels in love with her. I... There was nothing she could do that would upset me and just was fun and she's beautiful, she's intelligent. And I just can't say those things simply because that's not how I feel or how she appears to me now, knowing what I know and some of the behaviors that have come about. And what are some of the negative thoughts that you have about her? Like I said, the disappointment comes into play of not, of me thinking she didn't put forth enough effort. The insult of not respecting my time or my ability to co-parent, being as though it's our first go around at being a parent, so I would take it that we're both still learning. It, there right. is a learning curve. So all of a sudden, she's the expert. And my, my opinion doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. So about uh, feelings, what are some of the positive and negative feelings that you have toward her or and about her? Well, I, I think that she's trying. And if she's struggling with something, the best thing to do is to to be vulnerable enough to say, hey, I'm going through something and get help. So that's something she used to do. And from what I from where I stand, I think those issues are still there and not being dealt with. And I'm kind of getting the backlash from that. Mm-hmm. And that's where so, the disappointment on my end comes in. Right. So there's disappointment, sometimes frustration, sometimes anger. All of that shows up right now. Exactly. Okay. And how do you behave toward her? I've become, I guess, neutral because Mm -hmm. if I revert it back to pet names or a little silliness in the way I interact with her, it comes out as a reaction or an attack to me. So now I'm neutral. I just keep it about the kids, no small talk, and just that's it. Because if I go one step to the left or right, it opens up a can of worms and it becomes an argument. Right. Right. So sometimes um, when we're away from divorce for about four years, uh, it depends on if there's any part of you that is still stuck in the relationship aspect of it as a mate that you're still disappointed with or you're not clear. I hear you that you have learned from the relationship knowing that there are aspects of this relationship where you uh, it taught you that you still need to complete many of uh, your childhood uh, issues with your own mom, you know, whether you were attached to her or not, whether she fulfilled all of your expectations or not, or the way that maybe you rebelled against your mother, the things that you needed from her and didn't get, and maybe you needed to get it from uh, your uh, your ex-wife and she wasn't giving it to you. So there's something you've learned from that. There's also things that we all learn from our divorce uh, and the marriage, which is 
what areas worked. Uh, we all know that there are behaviors, there are thought patterns, there's emotions that when they are in our marriages, they work. And there are emotions and behaviors and thought patterns that it doesn't matter which marriage, which culture, where, you know, which age you do, just doesn't, doesn't uh, work for any marriage. So sometimes we are in it before we learn what it is you know every marriage goes through a honeymoon stage which like what you said it was all beautiful and uh, she could do no wrong and for her that was probably what it was for you and then marriages usually go through uh, finishing up the honeymoon stages and they go through a power struggle stage and if they you know people don't don't know how to out of that power struggle and kind of negotiate the uh, the equality equality of what their needs are and learn how to communicate appropriately. A lot of the divorces actually happen in this power strike struggle stage. And it seems like that's what actually happened. And the more that, that you found yourself in that, um, you both pulled back. And obviously children, the first one and the second one, um, when children show up in a marriage that is really healthy, it enhances the, uh, the relationship and moves forward. It gives meaning and purpose to a relationship. But if the relationship is not solid and it hasn't necessarily worked through and it's not healthy, then relation, then children just put a lot of um, stress uh, into the relationship. And it seems like for both of you, that stress just got the best and the better of both of you and then you need to let go. But today, after four years, it just uh, you need to maybe distinguish between the two parts. One is about you and the divorce, um, the, the marriage as it was, and your process of divorce, and who you are, and who you would be, and what do you think of yourself when you look at yourself as a married person or as a divorced person, um, and distinguish that from a person who's now a co-parent with another, let's say, family member. Because when you get a divorce from someone, when you don't have children, you just say bye-bye. You'll learn from it and move on. But when you have children, that person is a, becomes a family member for the rest of your life. And um, although your children are, are young right now and you have to deal back and forth, but even you know when they become 18, 19, 20 and they go on, you still have a lifetime family member. So if you could look at her as that, a lifetime family member, that um, some of who she is, you love, it's fantastic, and you can see it in your children. And she's someone who has given you these two beautiful children, and her, a lot of amazing, uh, her personality and her looks are into your children. So every time you look at your kids, you can see her. And then, you know, you know like every other family member, an aunt and an uncle, and a cousin and you know some even our parents they're areas that we just don't like and it irritates us and she's going to probably have some of those for the rest of her life and how to get to know them and how to kind of uh, allow her to be as who she is instead of making her wrong about it and then learn how to negotiate these times where you guys have to co-parent with uh with the children and also listen to what it is that she's complaining about you and see if it has any validity. Um, and if you could do it differently, and if you could listen to her and negotiate her and give her what she wants only because it makes it makes you a better person, because it makes you grow. If not, she's just, you know, complaining and because she wants a particular way and you don't just do it that particular way, then you can acknowledge her and let her know that I understand that that's your path and that's the way it is. And uh, this is mine and I'm more than happy to negotiate in a way because obviously we're going to be family members for the rest of our lives. So this is not a short term relationship and this is no longer about our marriage and this is about being an amazing parent to our kids. And let's choose us as a family because we will always be family. Um, let's choose us the better meant and the best that it can be for our kids. And this way, maybe you can shift the power struggle of what you had as the husband and wife and um, have it be two co-parents who can really look at what's best for the kids. Although you might have different opinions about what's best for the kids, but I'm sure you can negotiate something that works for both. And your kids, five and eight, they can talk now. And most of the time they can tell you what they want and um, you can really bring them into the negotiation pretty much and uh, see what's best for them. Does that, does that make sense to you? You're gonna, 
even at that young age of eight and five. But just to kind of, you know, touch on a point about negotiating, you need the other party, the other person to to come to the table with an open mind and also be willing to give something up is, I think, a key component to any negotiation. It, it can't always be my way, your way. It has to be something in the middle that we both can say, okay, I'll give up a day or I'll pick the children up or I'll pay part of the cost. It has to, you have to meet somewhere in the middle and it has to be something given up in order for that negotiation to be fruitful. But I do understand what you're saying. And that's what, that's the path I'm trying to take, but it's, very difficult. Kind of when uh, when we way. are married, uh, we attempt to, to look for some benefit, right? Like, um, even when you're working, imagine when we are driving, uh, everybody thinks of themselves first. Obviously, I need to look at what's beneficial for me, and that's what I do. But the other side is that we live in a community, we live with other people, we drive among other people who are also thinking of themselves. So when we look at a negotiation, obviously each person, when they come to the table, first think of themselves. And at one point for the negotiation to go well, um, they have to start looking at the other person's perspective and what their needs are to come to some term. The other part is some negotiations are one time deal only. Like you go, you know, shop for a house or a car or something and you know, you bargain and wheel and deal for one time and you feel good or bad about it when you come out. But some negotiations are in long term relationships, such as co parenting. It's a long term relationship negotiation. And marriage is a long term negotiation because we're gonna be in relationship. So the same thing as you know, when you're when you're at sports, that your favorite team is not going to always win because then we won't have any um, uh, fun sports to go to if only one uh, group only wins. So sometimes you win and sometimes they win and they keep up the whole sports industry because everybody gets excited because sometimes they get excited about who's going to win the next time and what do they have to do in order to win. So when you look at the relationship of co-parenting or marriage, um, we're all going to win at one point, and, but if the relationship is a lose, lose, obviously the relationship is going to go down, go south. So um, when you're a co-parent, you don't have the privilege of, oh, let me be nice and be winning because, you know, at the end of the night, we can cuddle and have an amazing, you know, lovemaking together. So obviously, as a co-parent, the only leverage that I have is to have happy kids and mature kids and kids who are going to grow up and love both of us. Uh, that's what your basically your advantage is in the negotiation piece. So if you can, as soon as possible, bring that out and, you know, bring your kids in and what makes them happy, what is it that they need and how can we negotiate? And if, you know, if I give this time and can you give this time and somehow we create this balance between the negotiation of each time that we have to deal with each other. That's one me mechanism to look at the communication. Another one is to systematize things as much as possible. Because when you systematize it, there is less time to kind of debate on these things. So systematize time frames, things that you got to do, finances. The more that you, you negotiate on systems, it's easier to just be done and, and you know, kind of follow the system versus needing to negotiate every time. Because negotiation every day, it becomes very much mood-based. And, you know, people can just be pissy one day and it doesn't matter. They just don't want to negotiate. So if you can create negotiations on systems, it... Okay. I haven't thought of Still. doing it in, in, in that Does that make sense? Manner. It does. It, it makes okay, right. very, very perfect sense. Awesome. Thank you, Clyde. It's awesome. You are my second caller. I love it. Call back anytime you want. I love talking to you. Love talking to you, doctor. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. Well, are we, Sean? What are, what are we doing? Are we going on a break and coming back with uh, another caller? I think. Oh, 
awesome. I can just go and talk to Nilo. Hi, Nilo. Hi. Is it Fuji? Hello. Hi, Hi. How are you? Good, good, great. Uh, are you Fujian? I am Fujian. Hi. So tell me a little bit you? about you. This is uh, this is Nilo Kalili. I wanted I got your e uh, email and I wanted to talk about um, uh, Bianca Foundation and mm -hmm. relation between uh, the teens and parents. And I wanted to know what is your idea of uh, I mean how can we improve this relation between these two uh, generations. Oh, thank you. Um, I love the work you do, Bianca Foundation, and uh, I, uh, I thank you for calling. And when it comes to parents and, and teens, I know that the Bianca Foundation got started over um, a tragedy of, uh, of uh, your daughter, right? That's right. Yes, and um, thank you for taking that on. I mean, I get... Um, I Absolutely. get caught up even thinking of uh, of what the uh, what you had to go through of losing your daughter, and I thank you for taking that grief and making it um, as a strong voice to for mothers and for fathers and for parents to uh, be up to see what it is that the teenagers are going through with all the Absolutely. shootings in school, with all the depression in school, with every stress that is happening. Teens are going yeah. through a lot a lot right now yeah and yeah. it really takes a whole family to be together and um and talk and open communication with their children in such a beautiful way that their teen has the capacity uh, and the clearing and the love and the space uh, of non-judgment to be able to talk to their parents and get resources and safety. So uh, I'm, the, what I can support you with, if I can, you know, we can meet and I can create and bring the awareness integration model somehow with your foundation and take them to, um, uh, school systems um, at this Absolutely. point you know we're yeah we're taking it we're uh, opening up actually we're doing it with a charter school uh crete charter school with 132 students who are um actually in south central and uh we're starting in in August with that school from which uh, serves about um, 132 students from age three all the way to 12 and we started this in um, the daycare and uh, we also did it with universities and I love to be able to get it to junior high and high school and create that. Um, Absolutely. So thank at, the, at this point I think um, I mean they throughout their life they need this kind of a guidance from the parents, especially these days that, you know, it's a chaos in the, in the world. And yes. most of them, I mean, it starts when they become a teen and, uh, you know, they, they are changing in every way and every little thing is a challenge for these teens. So Bianca Foundation started from high school, 9 to 12 grade, and they, I mean, this is what I always say. Imagine when you were 13 and you knew all this information, where would you be in life right now? I mean, these are the, the things that kids, I mean, they learn about everything, math, social study, history, geography. I mean, nine years of history, I don't know. I'm not saying that they shouldn't learn, but I think in one year they can learn all the history in the world. But what they don't learn is about life skills, how to challenge and um, how yeah. to overcome their challenges. And, yes. uh, you know, yes, peer pressure, need... bullying, conflict with parents, siblings, friends, peer rejection, school, tests, homework, yes. high expectation. I mean, they are in a lot of pressure. And I am as a mother who lost a 17 years old daughter by the hand of her peer. And it's like, I think all the teens, they, they need to, we need to show them a way um, to overcome their challenges. So nothing happened like this happened to anyone else, I hope. And um, 
it's a very, very sad tragedy, and I have to live with it for the rest of my life. But at least I want to bring some kind of education for the kids so they don't have to go through all this chaos. And ultimately, they're going to go to, um, you know, some of them that don't know what to do. They go to drugs, to alcohol, to depression, to, you know, they become 40 years old. They don't know what they want to do. They don't have a job. They, you know, they drop school. There's a lot of things that I'm facing every day. But right now, we have them in three, um, two major high school and three other um, smaller schools, uh, which there is a lot of students in there. And with the help of whoever is listening to this radio, please stand up, support. Pujan, support Bianca Foundation, support all this education that the kids need to learn. Um, I don't, I don't know how to say it, but I promise you, you are every saying it, family. Bianca. You are saying it, yeah. Tell them to go to BiancaFoundation.com or .org. Is that what where the it's, our listeners can go to? Yeah, it's the BiancaFoundation.org. It's a nonprofit organization. Okay. And we need parents. We need volunteer. We need a team to make this bigger and bigger and my goal is eventually this needs to become one of the curriculum in the school system they have yes. to do it yes we're uh i'd love uh, for people to go and check these are different systems different ways but i do agree with you that in some aspect um uh, teens, uh, junior high and teens uh, are very important. Most of the people really look at early childhood. I think early childhood has its oh. place and it has to be. But I also think that Absolutely. what the junior, with the people, with the kids going through with the junior high and high school also builds so much. You know what yes. these kids are? They are the future parents. Imagine yes. if they learn this stuff, what kind of a parenting they're going to do for their own children. Yes. Yes, you know? Nilu Jan, yes, Nilu, uh, it was a blessing so much, for you Pujan. to be able to be on the show at the first day of the show. I'm so glad that you <laughs> uh, called in and came in and um, thank you uh, for being with us and thank you for sending such an important message to thank all the so parents for... out there to take uh, take the life of their children seriously, take, take the emotional aspect seriously. So thank in. you. Exactly. Thank you so much yes. Pujan, for taking my call, honey. Good luck with uh, your show. Absolutely. You're amazing. Thank You're you. You're amazing. All right, honey. Thank you. Have honey. a good day. Bye-bye. You too. Um, wonderful. Wow. We had our first show together. How amazing is this? Now, I love to be able to hear your stories and hear your conversations and uh, just email me fujanzain at gmail.com and uh, you know uh, let me know that you want to be on the show and uh, put this on 9519223532 so I'll be here next Monday and um, at three o'clock so I love to be able to hear from you all of you again for um, all of you who listened and for all of you who were with us at the, you know, with, seen the video, uh, thank you for listening with your heart. And uh, I love you all and create an amazing, amazing time for yourself and everyone around you. Until next week. Bye-bye. The following is a paid program. Views and claims expressed are those of the program producer and are not endorsed by this station. Opinions expressed are not necessarily those of radio station KMET, its management, employees, or affiliates. Hello, listeners. This is Christopher from The Christopher Show. Hey, if you miss one of our shows here at KMET, don't worry about it. You can go to our webpage, and that's KMET1490AM.com. Go to the homepage, click on the sound.